Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Masterpiece, uh, The Shining. Um, you know, a lot's been said about this film. Um, it's regarded as a classic, classic film. And uh, it definitely is that. Um, I know the uh, uh, the book this film is based off of, you know, doesn't ha strike a whole lot of uh, similarities to the book, um, you know, outside of the basic plot of haunted hotel and the characters uh, being uh, being named the same names, um, you know, and. Various things were changed because that's what Kubrick wanted. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Stanley Kubrick, or Stanley Kubrick, uh, Stephen King was not too happy with these changes. And as often said, this film is uh, very cold, where his book is very warm. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. You might have a point there, uh, particularly how this film ends. Um, but, you know, this this is still a fantastic film. Uh, it's a film that um, has gone down as one of the most iconic horror films of all time. Um, it's a film that people watch every year around this time. And, uh, you know, not just because of the incredible work that uh, Stanley Kubrick uh, put into the film, but also, you know, Jack Nicholson and his performance, you know, his iconic performance as Jack Torrance. Um, it's really incredible. Um, and, yeah, this, uh, this scene is uh, one of the most iconic in horror history, you know, Here's Johnny, uh, which was improvised by Jack Nicholson. And uh, because Kubrick had been away for so long, uh, he'd lived in uh, Britain for so long, he had absolutely no clue what he was even referring to. You know, he never saw uh, Johnny Carson's Johnny Carson or the show. So he actually was going to. Uh, include a take of the scene where he doesn't say, here's Johnny. Um, but people had to convince him to keep it in, because, you know, that's just how you know deranged and out of his mind he is at this point. He's now just saying things uh, like that. And also how, it's, how in the film, it seems like he's not too fond of TV. And yet in this moment, it's like he's so out of his mind, essentially being possessed uh, and influenced by the ghosts. Not, yeah, not necessarily, I don't know if possessed would be the correct term, but maybe it could be. But he, you know, is just so out of his mind that that just was such a perfect thing for him to say. And he, obviously he kept it in the film, but it's it, also I find interesting that he actually was going to have it removed because he had no clue what Jack Nicholson was even talking about. I was like, that makes no sense. Here's Johnny. What? No. It's also funny with that scene, they uh, had to use a real door because they originally had a fake door, but unbeknownst to everybody, Jack Nicholson was a real-life volunteer firefighter, and so he knew exactly how to properly uh, cut down a door. And, uh, because they initially had a fake one, he uh, destroyed the whole door uh, in no time. And so they put up a couple of real doors because, you know, it's likely he's going to have to chop that up a couple of times. Um, but yeah, Jack Nicholson does an incredible job. Uh, you know, everybody does. Scatman Crothers. Lloyd, um, everybody 
even those who just have a very small part or in one scene. Uh, Shelley Duvall, you know, um, often gets uh, criticized for her performance and how, like, at times she's, her acting isn't all that good, or maybe she's overacting at times. And well, I do definitely think at times uh, either of those critiques do fit. Uh, do fit her. I think at the same time, uh, as the film goes on with her being hysterical, I think there are moments where she's appropriately, you know, screaming and, you know, and generally, genuinely terrified, especially since she was, uh, like Stanley Kubrick, she had a horrible time uh, working on that film. Um, so much so that uh, her hair fell out. She, she was so stressed, her hair was falling, and uh, she gave it to Stanley Kubrick, who kept her hair. And, uh, yeah, he, like, he wanted the best out of her, so he would berate her constantly. And, um, you know, if you ever saw that documentary, Stanley Kubrick, Life in Pictures, well, then, uh, like, you get this, it's like, if Stanley Kubrick likes you, he really likes you, and if you don't, you're gonna know he doesn't. And, uh, it's been said, Stanley Kubrick berated Shelley Duvall because he thought she wasn't terrified enough. And she had to be terrifying, so she kept, he kept berating her over and over to get the performance he wants. Though I think if you're doing, you know, like, 50 takes of something, because, you know, Stanley Kubrick is known for uh, having so many takes, for they're just mundane things, just, like, taking five steps down a hall, turning and, uh, turning a knob to go into a door, something like that could take 20 to 25 takes, let's just say that. You might think that's an overestimate, but that's just how he is. That's how detailed he is. And then he would might take, out of all those takes, oh, uh, clip three, uh, take three was the one that was used in the film. So all those other takes, you know, like maybe beyond take five was never necessary to everybody else, except for Kubrick, because he wanted to see every single take. Um, and that annoys a lot of people. Though I'm sure people are like, oh, they don't need to complain. They're getting paid a lot of money, and they're going to be in a movie that, you know, if it's good, it's going to make a lot of money, so there's no reason to complain. And, you know, there is a degree of truth to that. However, at the same time, I'm sure it goes not just for the actors or actresses, but I'm sure all the crew members have to change lighting and maybe adjust certain things for something as mundane as walking down the hall a few steps and turning to open a door. That probably annoys a lot of people, not just uh, whoever is acting in the scene. Um, but, but you know, but me saying this is all to, if Shelley Duvall was not acting scared enough or having the right reactions that he wants, well, keeping her in the film and you're, when you're just going to berate her over and over is probably not the best idea. You might want to go for a completely different actress at that point. Um, now, I don't absolutely hate Shelley Duvall in this film. I think she does okay for her role, though, you know, I think, of course, everybody will say, you know, Jack Nicholson is the real star of the film, which you know, I do tend to agree with that, but you know, it's it's still still interesting how uh, all of this you know all of this uh, you know uh, how, how Shelley Duvall was treated by Kubrick was, was a bit excessive, to say the very least. Uh, it's unfortunate, um, but it's how, uh, it's just how, it's just
just how it went, unfortunately, but yeah. And uh, yeah, speaking of casting, uh, apparently Stephen King thought it was wrong to ever cast Jack Nicholson in this film in the first place because well, everybody will know he's going to go insane thanks to, you know, one from the cuckoo's nest. Well, spoiler alert for that film, if you've never seen it, he wasn't actually crazy, he just acted crazy so he didn't have to go to prison. Uh, but, you know, that aside, though, a little bit on that film, it, I think you kind of pick up on that real quick. But, you know, Thought like someone like John Voight would have been better because you know at that point in time he had never played anybody who was would go insane and try to kill his whole family with an axe. So somebody like him, um, and 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 who knows maybe John Voight would have been a great. Uh, he would have been a great. Great pick for uh, for Jack. I don't know Jack Torrance. I don't know. It's, obviously, it's hard to see anybody other than Jack Nicholson at this point. But it's interesting who uh, Stanley or Stephen King thought, and apparently uh, Stanley Kubrick thought of uh, Robin Williams. But apparently, he saw one of his stand-up. Uh, Routines and thought uh, he's too crazy. And, uh, I'm curious how that would have played out. You know, Robin Williams as as Jack Torrance. I'm sure he would have been done a fine job. Same with John Voight. I'm sure John Voight would have been good too. But the way Jack Nicholson played this part, it's like it's Jack Nicholson's part. He really made it his own. Uh, yeah, he. This film is just incredible. It's a. I don't know that so much has been said about this film. It's like what can you say, aside from little tidbits like I've already talked about. You know, it's uh, it's forty years old this year. It's a film that's truly a. Uh, a classic. And some say it's not really scary. You know, it's not a horror film because it doesn't scare people. Um, it could be more of a psychological uh, horror film. You know, you know, is he really going insane, or is it all in his mind? Or is he actually being, you know, haunted by ghosts? Are there really ghosts there, you know? It makes uh, it makes you wonder as the film goes on, and uh, it's quite interesting how uh, the conversation that Kubrick had with uh, Stephen King before the film was going into shoot had a conversation, and how he thought, you know, it doesn't ha there being ghosts kind of have a sort of a definitive thought on the matter of whether when you die you go to heaven or hell or whatever. Isn't there something like a, you know, or something morally or something like that? And, uh, and it, was, it was King who said, well, you know, it's, uh, well, it was Stanley, uh, don't you, uh, well, what about hell, you know, and like, kind of like, I guess the ghosts are somewhat in purgatory, and that's why they're ghosts here that hotel you know, well, what about hell and he just replies I don't believe in hell and hangs up you know and uh, though I guess considering that Stanley Kubrick was you know his parents were Jewish and you know while he himself said he didn't have a much of a big religious upbringing you know it seems like a religious roots he was Jewish to a good extent, you know, uh, might have gone to a synagogue a few times in his childhood at some point, but, you know, considering that, you know, that Jewish people don't believe in hell, 
Uh, so from that angle, that kind of makes sense. That, you know, he doesn't believe in hell. You know, like he thinks it was like a too optimistic, I guess, when it comes to the question of regarding ghosts and spirits and souls and everything and question it. Uh, yeah. It's quite interesting to say the least. Um, yeah, this, uh, Stanley Kubrick just really showed how diverse of a filmmaker he was, you know. Uh, it's been said you couldn't, you really couldn't, um, uh, pin him to just one genre. He really did so many genres that it's like it's, you know, it's hard to say for sure whether or you know, what, what kind of film uh, Kubrick uh, would do. I mean, there are certain things you can tell it's a Kubrick film, but at the same time, there he's just so different in every film he made. That, uh, it was always an experience, and it was always fantastic. And um, I, I, I've always enjoyed his films. I've always enjoyed this film, and uh, I love watching it uh, around this time of year. It's just incredible. Uh, so yeah, I could keep praising it and keep, uh, having little tidbits here and there, but then I'd just be talking and talking and then I really go nowhere. But, uh, yeah, what do you all think of The Shining? Do you enjoy it? Do you not like it? Uh, did it ever scare you? It never scared me, but, you know, I can definitely, uh, I understand the uh, creepy factor to it. Uh, certain scenes, particularly that uh, woman in bathtub, that's pretty creepy. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a, an astonishing film. It's an incredible film. Uh, but yeah, do you enjoy this film? Do you not enjoy it? If you want to comment what what your thoughts are welcome to do so and uh with that i hope you're all having a great week and a great weekend um, yeah hope i have a great day and i'll see you all next time